Well, while we try and get Ryan uh, visual, let's uh, like we can uh, begin. Um, it being seven thirty, I'm going to open the meeting. And for all concerns, this meeting is being recorded. Um, didn't look at the uh, to see how many. If if I look, are the meetings all in there? I didn't. I I read them before, but I don't know if they're. Can we do uh, minutes tonight? Did Debbie get a minute? Uh, there's the twelfth, the second, and the sixteenth. Yeah, okay, the that's what I got. The I minutes? just wanted to make sure that they were all done. They're ready. Yeah, I read them. Okay. Well, um, you how you make it out there, Ryan? Um, struggling with my uh, video. You guys can't see me, right? No, not yet. The lights on. Nice snowman. What's going on? All right. Well, moving on to the minutes, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the minutes dated November second, two thousand twenty-one. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Ryan Carroll and a second by Chris Hayden. Has any uh, changes or omissions or additions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I, I think we need a roll call. If, yeah. And, uh, Mr. Hayden. Aye. <laughs> and Mr. Carroll. Aye. And I say aye as well. So that's three in favor. There's only the three of us here tonight, so, so far. I know Jer we didn't hear from Jeremiah, right? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Pearson. All right, Mr. Hayden, if you would please. Pardon me, Mr. Carroll, Oops. if you would please. <laughs> yes. Move to accept the minutes dated November 16th, 2021. Second. Okay. A motion by Brian Carroll and a second by Chris Hayden. Um, all in favor? Mr. Hayden. Oh, I have a correction first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any corrections or omissions then? <laughs> Page nine, fourth. Paragraph, second sentence, I believe it should say, there used to be a drive-in movie theater at that location. Not three used to be a drive-in theater. Yeah. This place than R, that's all. Okay. That None should fit right in. Anything else? Thank you. That's all I found. Okay, and then all in favor, Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. And myself is I. Okay, um, let's, uh, since I see, I see we have Sergio here, so why don't we uh, look at this, uh, the A&Rs there. Um, does everybody read the, uh, the, the blurb and uh, the, um, I'll take a look at that plan for that? I did. I think the only question that Danielle was the one that Danielle brought up, and that is whether or not that 160 feet on that lot is grandfathered. Was that correct? Um, you have to read the legal notice. Oh, oh. So the A and R, okay. Um, yes. Okay. Well, courtesy notice, but. Yeah, it's a courtesy notice. Yeah. All right, um, let me get to that. Uh, I got it. Do you want me to read it? What, under the application? Yes, it's the first page of the application. All right, okay, I got it. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please, Chris. Town of North Reading Community Planning Commission courtesy notice. Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission We'll hold a virtual meeting on Tuesday, December 7th, 2021 on the application of 1214 Concord Street LLC for an approval not required plan dated October 26, 2021, drawn by LJR Engineering Incorporated for the property located at 41214 Concord Street, North Reading, Mass. Map 18, parcels 13, 14, and 15. A copy of this plan has on file in the Community Planning Commission office Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Friday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Um, so once again, it is an ANR. And um, obviously when we get into the commercial district there, the frontage is supposed to be 200 feet. And um, I guess we're, this is grandfather, Danielle. Was that what the decision was? 
Oh, we can't hear you. I discussed it with um, the building inspector and with attorney man and the building inspector did agree that it became non-conforming when the zoning was passed at town meeting in June. Um, and so it's just retaining a non-conformity and I don't know if attorney man wanted to um, explain any of that any further, but yeah. I can if it pleases the board. Yeah, please, Jill. I'm 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 uh, I'm just a little, I'm a little curious actually about that. It, it's it's actually a really unusual, right? Uh, but yeah. So when yeah, you have a non I... when you have a nonconformity, um, which occurred it was as soon as the project got rezoned. So you have these three lots side by side. One of the lots has 267 um, feet of frontage, so that's lot one. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that after the ANR, it has 200 feet of frontage because I can't not have it have 200 feet. But the middle lot had 160 feet of frontage at the time it was rezoned and 40,000 square feet of area. So I must retain 160 feet of frontage in order to maintain that non-conforming status. And the reason you're allowed to kind of shift frontages is because the property is already developed and used. So it is a pre-existing legal legal um, lot for residential purposes. And the size of it, i.e. the lack of frontage, was protected because the nonconformity arose with regard to that lot due to the rezoning. So, so um, it, it, Mr. my question would be, if they decided to use that particular lot for a commercial purpose, would it then have to, you know, because you said residential purpose, but if it, it was going to be still is residential for a commercial lot, it would, have, would it have to go to the 200? It's, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine how you could not do that. You can't just all of a sudden change. It's within there. The lot is the lot is legally existing nonconformity. So let's yeah. think about, yeah, it could. The use, it still would be protected. You could, you could. So yeah, for example, it would no the, longer be it would no longer be uh, residential though it would be commercial but then it's the but, use uh, so it's a little different so the reason so when you have nonconformities for example you have the merger stuff merger doesn't yeah. apply when you have a use on a property and that's why that lot you know it just stays yeah, where it is say, because because those, that lot is connected to other lots owned by the same owner so theoretically you would. You it would not you wouldn't be allowed to keep the nonconformity because you own the abutting properties. But it, but you are because it's an existing lot with an existing use. So you the reason the, the, the reason for merger is to avoid overburdening a property. So you don't have that concept because you have two hundred feet of frontage on either side of it. And those are all those. Those always existed, is that correct? Those two lots in the front, all three oh, lots kind of existed, right? Okay. Exactly, Mr. Hayden, yeah. yes. So that's all. Well, so, so that middle lot has not is not changing its lot? It, it, we did ship the line. line. We shifted the line, but it's maintaining the 160 square, 160 feet of running frontage, which you're also allowed to do okay, because, because you're not I increasing. See that, I see, yeah, I see where you shifted it. You yeah. shifted that, you have that, uh, that parcel B and that parcel A are a, a, the shifts. Exactly. Well, I don't know. Allowed, I think uh -huh. that's on shaky ground. It isn't. It's actually, it, it, you're allowed to do that as long as you don't increase your nonconformity. It's just the way, I mean, I. It, it's the way it works. So for example, I could have, before we even did the rezoning, come in with an A&R plan and done exactly what you just saw. Exactly, and it would be the same result. And then, and then it would definitely be a, a nonconformity once it was rezoned. And it's the same thing. It's the same application of logic. So that's why I say to you, it doesn't, it's protected. That middle lot is protected. The end lot, lot one, has to have the 200 feet of frontage because it right. didn't, it had, it had more than the 160 before. So when it was rezoned, but I'll tell you, if I had done it before, Mr. Hayden, to your point, if in um, May I had changed it, to be 160, 160, and then 240, I could have done that. Yeah, you could have. I could have, but Mr. Mr. Coviello didn't want to do it. He's like, there's no, I, I don't care to maintain. Well, I don't know if, I don't know if you would have been able to, I think it would, your sideline to the, uh, to that house on lot two would have been, or parcel B would have been too close. I thought I could play with it. I thought I could kind uh, of- you would, you would, you would, you'd have to keep yeah. your side set back off correctly. Yeah. And here it is, but if you moved it that much up, that's another what 
35 feet, right? Yeah. 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 So I don't think it would have made it because of that side setback. But I do agree with what you're saying, Jill. It does. It didn't really make sense to me until you explained it. Now it does. Yeah. But I, I do have a request uh, for Mr. Coviello. You see how uh, parcel B is going to have its, its octagon shape, basically? Yep. When I don't know, he might already have some some uh, survey stakes out there that have a nail in them at those corners. I don't know if he does or not, but if he could put some some rebar or some steel in the ground at those corners, so yeah, that iron, the, the owners are in pipe, so that the yeah. owners can find that later on because it'll be it'll be a you know questionable in there. It's it's always yeah. tough. No, we'll post. I mean, I think Sergio, I, I, I think he's unmuted. Sergio, can you just confirm that you will, in fact, do that with the iron pipes, please? Yes, not a problem. We can do that. Thank, Thank you. you. That's because, because we've had issues with it before. When you get an odd shaped lot, we put the iron pipes in, and there's never, then they don't come back to us asking us where the heck their land is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. you know, we'll put them in, no problem yeah. at all. It's good. We're all doing right. it for the posterity, for the people that come after here. So. I agree. Yep. I agree. So uh, yeah. So um, um, uh, all right. Uh, I've not seen where we've been able to actually reconfigure a lot, having a butter, having the butter properties owned by the same owner, and then change the shape of the lot and still left it non-conforming. That's a little. That's like you know a few things more than what it's, it's a it's a lot doing on going on at the same yeah, time it's, it's a lot it's more a than lot what i've on. seen done on uh on a lot like that and and i'm wondering and so my 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 one what i'm wondering is if it then if that's going to then restrict this to residential use i mean we are no matter what mr coviello is keeping that front property as, as, a, uh, as a residential, residential. use and if he ever wanted to convert it, my guess is he'd merge all the properties because he can have more than one building on a lot. So he yeah. would end up merging them. It's he, he wouldn't he he, he yeah, literally wanted to keep them separate. Commercial yeah, he wants to keep one. them separate because he wants them residential. Yeah. And if he merges and he ends up doing he would yeah. probably merge them, Mr. Pierce. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. it'd probably come out that one driveway, not all the driveways. Exactly. There would be no point to having both driveways. If you're going to do yeah. all commercial, it'd be better to right. come in. Right. Oh. All right. Um, all right. Any uh, are there any other? I, I don't. I think that was the only real question, the only real issue yep. that we had with this. Is that correct, uh, Danielle? Does everything else appears to? That's right. And I really kept my comments just to the question of the frontage and whether the plan was endorsable because then anything future having to do with the zoning on the property um, wouldn't be it, it whether or not it's a problem in the future I won't comment on maybe you know it's just really what's in front of us right now is whether the plan is endorsable because of um, adequate frontage so yeah because just because we endorse the ANR doesn't mean you can do anything with it right now <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what the laugh is for right? yeah that's the first that's the first step the next step is to get it get it a per, per, permit for through the building inspector right? exactly. but having having already run it through him and having a somewhat of a preliminary okay from him is probably helpful though it's a camera so all right um ryan do you have a uh do you have a, are we ready for a motion on this do you have a motion for us yes sir i do okay I if you would please really Yes, I move the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse approval not required on the plan entitled Plan of Land in North Reading, Massachusetts, Middlesex County, dated October 26, 2021, drawn by LJR Engineering Incorporated. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second uh, uh, by Mr. Hayden. Is there uh, any other further comments or questions? No, I th that was my only request is that, you know, I've had that same problem and other people have had the same problem about not being able to find their corners of their lots. Right. Right. And that's a funny, it's funny shape. Nobody's going to be able to go out there unless it's a, a guy with a surveying yeah. it to find the right yeah. corner. Well, you put the iron rod, you put the steel pipes in the ground, the iron rods in the ground, you can find them pretty quick with a metal detector. Yeah, you can. Yeah, sink them deep. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, uh, hearing no, any, no more, any discussion or hearing none, um, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. And myself is aye. And that's the three of us for tonight.
Thank you and, very uh, much. Um, there you go. I will thank see you, you at your next meeting on the 21st. Take care, yes, Daniel. Thank, thank you, thank you for coming and explain that because I was a little, I'm, I'm still a little on the fence on it, but uh, we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> Too many years I can explain it again. I can explain it again. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. We're good. Take care. Good night. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All righty. What do we got next here? Uh, come on. I think you're going to have to go to your. Uh... Yeah, I'm just waiting for this to come up. Okay, there we go. That one's all done. Yeah, I couldn't just read it off of share file. I had to actually download it to the plan. You could you could do your accessory units or your small wireless. Um, yeah, well, I'm, or I'm, we can do just... the discussion on 35 Main Street. Right now, I'm just trying to wake this thing up. So hang on a minute. I, I should say that the ADU and the small cell wireless, um, I have not really had enough time to move them forward enough for a real discussion. So I think we'll okay. have to for the next one. We could, we could we table could those. On those. Um, the, the discussions are not. I've had some pretty spirited discussions with a few different people on those though lately. Oh. So, so um, okay. um, so, um, we might, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to us get, get, we're putting that back on the agenda then. Great. Great. So, um, and to see what we would, uh, how we, how we might approach this. Good evening, Jeremiah. Nice to see you. Um, okay. So, uh, then I guess we can do, what have I got here? We'll do the uh, 35 Main Street storage facility discussion. Sure. You, what, I see uh, Mr. Yeah. Hall is here. Okay. Oh, but you're okay, muted, Ms. both Hall. of you. Pardon? <laughs> Mr. Hall is muted. Oh, okay. Oh, still wanna muted. Unmute, wanna unmute yourself there? Lower left hand corner. Oh, you remuted yourself. Can you can you unmute yourself? Are you on Hello, another Mike? device that needs to be unmuted as well? Because I see you you're unmuted you, on one. You got two. You got two going here. There you go. No, nope, you're still not you're still muted. Are you on the you're on the phone and you're showing up in two places. Is it that just nod your head? Is the is the is the computer you're using doesn't have the audio? So while he works on that, Danielle, do you want to you want to give us just a little overview of what it is that we're uh... sure? Um, so Mr. Hall contacted me recently. Um, he had been in front of the CPC six months ago with a yeah. request uh, to change some right. of the space, you know, to not have it be required to be retail, but to be able to use it for storage. Um, and mm -hmm. I guess the, you know, six months have gone by and I guess has not been successful in finding tenants for that space. So wanted to discuss that with us um, prior to, yeah, you know, he hasn't filed anything, but. Um, if I remember correctly, we told him to come back in six months after he tried to market it a little more. Right. Yeah, I don't think that much marketing has gone on, Warren. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been, lo I've been looking into it a little bit and, and I think it's Atlantic Realty. He's got it with, um, and LoopNet had it on there for a while, but they're not even advertising it anymore. So I don't know when, how long he's been not advertising it. Cause I haven't been tracking it every day. Um, but you know, Zillow picks it up, but they think it's a single family home kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, a couple others do the same thing because they're, they're looking at homes, but they see the property. Um, 
So some of it thinks it's, it's not developed yet. Um, so, you know, I just don't see, I don't see a lot of effort. Um, you know, it's just that, that one, that one realtor has it and I'm not sure how much, you know, they're really trying it to move it in this market. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, one of the things about this market also is, um, we have, you know, one of the considerations I would say for this particular situation is that anything that we do now kind of becomes forever. That's right. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. So it, for the sake of these months, few months, are we willing to make a, a forever decision? Um, and again, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of things I think that play into it, not the least of which is the propensity of people to do a lot of their shopping online now and whether or not they'll go back to the brick and mortars once the whole... Uh, COVID thing goes away, that's a question. I don't know if we can answer because the longer we stay locked out, if you will, the, the more used everybody's gonna get to dealing with everything online and actual shopping in the stores may drop off by some amount, so. Um, I don't know, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but I think there's also uh, a need and want for people to be out there and, and going around. and and. Those don't need to be stores there. They could be anything. Well, well, yeah, but boutiques, you know, we don't we don't really have anything, you know. I mean, I don't know why we can't get some of these stores here. Or uh, whether they whether it's the thing is so omnipresent as a uh, um, as a storage facility that nobody would ever think that there'd be a store there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean there's good storefronts. There's, there's good there's, storefronts. There's big there. presences as a uh, uh, a storage facility so the yep. fact that there may be a boutique where they could buy something nice might not occur to anybody unless it's advertising out front yeah so um um just not sure that this uh um that i'm not sure that i'm ready to make a forever decision on this exactly I mean, yes, I saw some of the some of the advertising is a little bit interesting too. Okay. Um, they're talking about like uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. I left the paper where I were at another location, but one of their uh, one of the um, pamphlets that this realtor came out with came up with like some number that didn't make any sense with what the what it was supposed to like supposed to be square footage or dollars or something and it, it made no sense to what it was um but maybe i can if i have a minute i can find well, hang on a minute hang on because jeremiah yeah. Go ahead. yeah i was just going to say like um with the potential of sewer coming down the line it seems like we should be more forward thinking and what the possibilities are uh, under that under that you know alternate reality versus where things are now as you say you know, it could be a, a long-term decision that we're making. So uh, I'm inclined to say that we should give us some time to breathe under, under that, that possibility because, you know, boutiques or not, um, you know, that, that's going to open up usages that could be long-term beneficial for the community that I don't know that closing them off right now would be the, you know, best idea. Yeah. Um, can I just make a suggestion, John, are you able to phone in using the, the call in phone number from your phone rather than trying to link from the zoom. I feel a bit bad that John's not able to respond to any of this. Um, so. Well, hang ahead. on a minute, Chris, Chris, hang on. Yeah, a no, 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 that's all right. Uh, do, uh, John, just a nod your head. Do, do, are you on a laptop? And does it have, it has a microphone and all that? Can you see in the lower left-hand corner? Yeah, okay. Wait, the, you're muting, you're muting. the muting just came back on. Okay. You are now, now, now it's off. Right? But I can't hear you. So do, is your microphone turned down on your computer? There might, the volume, like the X might be out. Um, are you able to dial the phone number that's given or is it not working like through your telephone? I don't know if he knows what it is. Oh, do, oh, do you want me to 
No, do you want me to give it to you? Okay, let me put it in the chat one moment. Um, just pull it out of the agenda. <laughs> one minute. Um, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna first. John, by shaking your head, have you used that before as a, uh, and it worked okay? Okay. The phone numbers, it's 1301, but I'll, I'll put it in the chat. 301-715-8592. And let me put that in the chat. Uh, 301-715-8592. I see the phone number appearing. He's in the waiting room. Okay, I've let him in. Now maybe you could talk. Talk, John. On your other phone, on the phone. There you go. I can hear you, yes. Okay. Oh, there we go. We don't need to see him. Now. Just need to hear him. Get the phone close enough to your mouth so we can hear it. <sighs> yep, how's that? Okay. Perfect. So you've heard what we're, what we're doing. Um, you made, wanted to make some comments on it. Correct, yeah. Um, let's go back to the beginning of time when we first got permitted for this project. There was no, no uh, nothing in the bylaw that says that this had to be a multi-use property. Um, we listened to the board on a couple things they wanted to do. They wanted us to incorporate the town colors in our logos. We did that. We entertained the, doing the retails. We said, sure, we'll try that. Uh, we've had a professional realtor, Atlantic, as you mentioned. Uh, we've been marking in it for two and a half years now. And uh, we haven't, uh, you know, things were, had a couple of interests before COVID hit. And since COVID hit the last 20 months, there hasn't been anything, you know, a couple of people come in and look at the space and never hear from them again. So I know you guys want to see this down the road as uh, what options might be coming with soup, with the sewer, sewer coming down the road and not sure when that'll take place. Um, that could definitely change the use of the units, but, you know, we've been pulling this uh, dead space for going on two and a half years so i went back to you guys back in july you told me to come back in six months and nothing's changed on the property we still have ten thousand eight hundred square feet of vacant space okay so originally we went in we were just going to do all self-storage and uh, the board members thought it would be good to have multi-use we said okay we'll try it and we tried it we've hired a professional to market it um a, a professional commercial realtor and i haven't been able to sign a lease since we opened in we started marketing it in may of 19. yeah all right so well, can um, I, I have a question, Warren, if I may. Go ahead, Chris. So Atlantic Realty put together a uh, a little uh, brochure for you. Did you ever read that, John? Uh, they've put out multiple 
to be honest yeah, with you. I'm looking at one right now that's online, and it says 11,456 average drive time. I have no idea what that means. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's it's interesting. I mean, they've got they've got a nice picture of the building um, and the plot plan and stuff, and a couple pictures right. of the aerials. But <laughs> the, the little bit of words on there every day. You know, one business? line doesn't mean anything. To right. me. How how many people, business people, do you think have traveled up and down that road in the last two and a half years that would have seen this for lease signs? Uh, I don't know. They're not very big for lease signs. They're you know you have to be looking over there. But if you're going too fast, which is one of the problems we have on this road, is the speed. You don't see it. I mean, you see there's a big there's a big building over there, and it's a storage building. You don't know if there's anything else over there. Um, I, think that, I, think, I, think, I think that's part of the problem. I think that part of the problem here is that this this site needs to be, you know, I mean, like it, it would need to be pretty actively marketed. And and it sounds I, I didn't look into it myself, so I'm going on what Chris has said. It doesn't sound like they've uh, it sounds like kind of a half hearted marketing, not nothing that's, that really. Not, well, not really to trying to do anything with it. I mean, you know, if you if you don't if you don't try, you can clearly not get anything. Right. So, but after two years of a realtor marketing something and not getting any interest, I'd be frustrated probably as well. Yeah. So I mean, the whole the whole point is there was nothing in the bylaws that said this had to be a multi-purpose, multi-use location. Um, we took, you know, you guys said that there was a need for retail in the area and that we should try to attract other people. And we said, sure, we'd love to have other people come to the site because then they get used to us being there in our office. And if they ever need storage down the road, they know where we are. So we said, sure, let's go, let's try it. And we've tried. But I'm the one who was putting up the financial burden for the last two and a half years of having empty space in a market that's not even, you know, in an environment and an economy that, as everyone knows, uh, is not great for retail. What's the um, what's the condition of the rest of the building? Is it full? Uh, the sec- the uh, storage section is seventy eight percent occupied. Okay. Once we hit seventy, we start looking at the next area to start building out. Because by the time you do the design and the lead time and everything else, that takes another probably six months before we could fill in the or four probably another five months before we could finish that as storage if we were to, to move forward. So that's why we looked at it in July when we finished off the third floor and because we were basically out of units by the time we finished that. So now we're hey, basically leasing up. Floor. Hey, John, this is Ryan. Um, quick question for Hi, you. Is, hey, um, what what would you propose doing if you were to you know if the board were to grant you to to infill a couple of those retail storefronts? I mean, would you just be frosting the glass and converting it to a storage space, or uh, basically, there's two sliders for for storage customers to access on the, either side of the building. So there are ten foot openings with the uh, five foot opening sliders. We replaced the front man door with a slider because the front man door is only a four foot. So people would have difficulties getting the uh, the dollies through and the carts that we provide to get through. So we'd want a bigger opening than what's there. So we'd put uh, sliding glass doors just like we have on the side. In, in place of the the current like retail storefront opening. Correct. Correct. And then and then what? That retail space would just be someone storing their stuff in there like any other storage unit. Correct. We we. Uh, fit out the rest of the space with the with the actual units themselves. Oh, like you have a, like a, a steel cage or something that goes inside. Correct. Yeah, they're all free freestanding. They're just bolted together, and you can just infill it. That's what a lot of people do with conversions of old buildings and things like that. They don't. They just keep the shell and fit out the inside for storage. Is there is there any way, John, to to gain access from the backside so you could maintain the storefronts in case you wanted to? There to we weren't able to do anything behind the back without conservation. We had to get permission from them just to trim the trees that were hitting the building. No, oh, no, I'm sorry. I meant like internal in the building. Is there? I don't know what's. I don't know what's directly behind the demising wall at the back of the retail space. In the tunnel, John. There, there is a drive-through that we could have access through. 
I'd have to look at the floor plan and see if that would interfere with the other doors that we have for the drive through to access the elevators. Yeah. Because you go into the drive through and then there's three parking areas that you park inside the building and then because it's one for each for each elevator. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, well, I don't know, guys. What's your pleasure? I mean, do you uh, do you want to? Uh, um, again, I I don't uh, I, did, I haven't looked into the uh, level of marketing that you've done, and so uh, but based on the research that Chris has done, the marketing hasn't exactly been uh, enthusiastic. Right. Well, there's been a for lease sign on there for, like I said, over two years. Yeah, but, uh, as I said before, though, by, by virtue of the fact that you that the whole thing is built in, in, in the facade, it presents itself as a storage unit. You're unlikely to get a drive by as, as, as much as you are likely to get somebody who's looking and looks online and goes to Atlantic Realty and gets something besides some, uh, you know, uh, uh, some gobbledygook that, that's written down there, gets a, perhaps a real description, a real cost analysis and stuff like that. So I mean, I mean, based on what he's reading, they, I, I, if I was looking for a space and I read that, I'd keep right on moving. Right, I agree. That's not the best word. Um, I know Mr. Hayden said that uh, you know it's been up on LoopNet, and ideally you don't keep a property up on Loop LoopNet. Well, it's actually Continue. not on LoopNet now. It's Correct. LoopNet take it down periodically because you don't want it showing that it's been available for a thousand days. Well. <laughs> So, that's 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 fine so then it's only atlantic realty that's been looking at it and how long has it been off a of loop that i haven't checked i mean i could find out i suppose um right you know um and everything else i see in here is all old stuff about uh when it was a uh bowling alley okay john here's what i want to do here's what i'd like to do see if everybody agrees with this I'd like to uh, put you on next month for a meeting, okay? And I want to, we're gonna, and I'd like the rest of the board, I'd, we'd like to, I'd like to do a look at it and to see what kind of actual marketing has, has been done and maybe talk to Atlantic Realty and see if, if we can get a, a feeling from them about just how bad or how impossible this is. And then uh, if, if they convince us that that is, then we may have a better shot at, at moving in your direction. Okay, I'll send Danielle uh, the uh, the broker's contact. Okay, and we'll have the number who's been listing it. Yeah, we'll take I'll a look. If you and if if they've really given it a fair shot, I think we can give you a fair shot. But if they haven't, you know, then they then they should. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's right. Okay, okay. Does that okay, work great. for everybody? Anybody else have any uh, questions about that, or would like to make any changes to that? You okay, Ryan? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, you know, this is a forever decision, John, for us, because once we do it, it's not, we're not going to, you're not going to go back. That's not your business right. to go back. So you're not going to go back. So really, we need to, uh, we need to do it. Pardon? We made it, the usual storage is a 510 grid. We made that 2020. So yeah. 10 years from now, if there's apartments needed in town or something, we can convert, take out the units and convert that to, you know, go back to the planning board and convert it to apartments. Who knows? Yeah, well, that's, that's, an interesting, that, that's an interesting concept. I like that. <laughs> so we got well, let's, um, let's, uh, let's give us a chance to do, do a little more looking into it and spread some information out to the whole board. And then we'll come back and I'm uh, not going to make you wait a long time, just a month so that we have a chance to really look at this. And then come back, and if we think that that's uh, that it's not that that there's been a fair uh, a fair attempt made, and um, and um, then I think you might have a, a chance of getting where you need to go there. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, can Thank I just you. can I yes, just ask, ahead, um, Warren, how would you want this to be on the agenda next month? Do you want us to consider it a minor modification? Is he applying for site plan review? Is it just yeah. another informal discussion? Well, how, I don't know do just know? yet. I want, to, I want to have everybody, I mean, we could put it back on for a discussion because, okay. um, I mean, we can obviously, if we, 
um, if we get close to the date and, and we've all talked about it and it looks to us like that's the direction we're going, yeah, we'll put it on as a minor mod and and let, and, uh, and we can vote on it that night. So, okay. Thanks. But we'll make Great. that decision when you get a little closer. All right, I'll send that information out to Danielle. Okay, thank you, John. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah, I hope this had worked out better for you, but we'll we'll uh, we'll give it a fair shot. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to handle it. We need to look at what's really going on there. So, Chris, you might we might have you uh, see if you can accumulate a little more information on that. Sure. I'm and trying we'll to find out where, where they're located. It looks like the closest is in Revere. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're, they're not even locally, you know, so. Yeah, well, let's take a look. Let's see what we've got. Uh, what, let's see what's out there uh, and see what else is out there. He'll get, the, she, he'll get the information over to Danielle. We'll talk to them and see what, the, you know, what they say about, uh, you know. Um, yeah. And, and it'll also give us a chance if we want to talk to a commercial realtor on our own. Um, yeah, you know, and, and he he forgets that that was a special permit, and yeah. he needed my vote for that special permit. Yeah, <laughs> he got it because of that. Okay, yeah, that's okay. I don't I, I don't think that's the issue. I think because there might be an issue of fairness here. So we'll let's uh, let's let's take a look, see what we can find out. Right. No, no, I, we'll, I don't want to we'll, hurt we'll, him, but we'll readdress it. You know, he I I we actually have a storage unit in that in his building. Yeah. So he just opened up the third floor and, yeah. you know, so I don't think, you know, it, it won't take him long if he, to, to make the changes on this place. Yeah. Commercial yeah. is a little different than other things. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we, we are a planning board, so we have to respect somebody that's doing planning. <laughs> yep. We do. Okay. We do. All right. Um, okay. I've lost this now. Let me see. Uh, Oh, you got your time certain. You can you can uh, do your next yep. motion, Mr. Pierce. Yep. Orion, Orion can. Yeah. Well, my iPad dropped off, so I just had to bring it back in again here. So, all right. So, um, ninety-two Concord Street. Um, uh, site plan review. So, Danielle, I'm going to let you. I mean, I know. I'd rather than me explain it. Why don't you explain it to uh, what's what's going on with that? Sure. So after I know that we have over the well, last. We, I'm sorry. Do, do we have to do? We're not gonna. We're not. We're not gonna hear this tonight. Is that correct? So we don't need to read the public right. hearing notice. Well, okay. I think so. Town Council advised me that because it's been advertised, what you should do is open the public hearing and then continue okay. it. Um, I know Mr. Keys, you know, indicated that he would like to continue it. Although I don't know the date, you just have to make sure we have a you know date and time certain um, when we do that. So, okay, so then, I, I don't know so if then, you want me to give. And any kind of introduction about why we're continuing or if you just want to not open yet. it. I think well, the first thing we're going to do is just as I said, we're going to read the public hearing notice and formally open the hearing and okay. then move from there. So I don't know. I don't know what that one is. So uh, the public hearing notice. Uh, well, let me just look here. It should be with that. the application. I usually yeah. put it when I where I put the correspondence or application. It should be the first page. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't download that. Sorry. The application. Yeah, there it is. I got it. Oh, you got it? Yeah. If you would, please. Town of North Reading Community Planning Commission public hearing notice. Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, December 7th, 2021 at 8 p.m on the application of Brickway Realty LLC for a site plan review modification for the property located at 92 Concord Street, North Reading, Mass, 01864, map two, parcel three. You may participate in this hearing online at https colon backslash backslash us02web.zoom.us backslash j backslash 985-430-0926 or by phone with the phone number meeting ID is the same. Uh, this hearing will be broadcast live on NORCAM. I think that's the gist of the whole thing. Okay. Okay. 
So that with that with that reading of the public hearing notice, then I will open the the hearing. I will open it now. Um, I'm sure everybody's read the uh, the uh, list of complaints and all that stuff, but there are some issues. So I thought I saw is one of the owners a Mr. Moran. Yes, and I did see I him on I the saw call him before. On here I don't see before. him. I did see him sign in, but I don't see him on right now. I don't see him now. So um, why don't you then give us a brief uh, uh, explanation of what we're not going to do tonight? <laughs> um, so we were just advised to open the hearing and continue it. Um, the issue was that um, we heard from, there are three trustees, we heard from two of them that um, they were not in agreement with the application being submitted. So um, the application that submitted, um, you know, was, was done by attorney Keys um, and he was not able to get uh, the signatures of the other two trustees. Um, we had town council look at it to be sure we were responding to an application, you know, that was with, um, you know, authorized by by the ownership as defined in the, you know, the, the condominium trust, um, their master deed. And the way that the, um, the way the trust is set up, the town council advised us that we needed all three and we, we do not have that, so. Um, Okay, so um, I wanted to open the public hearing because they could they could withdraw at any time without prejudice, but um, but not if we but I didn't want to discuss it without a proper opening of it. So, so um, is there? Uh, I don't know if there's uh, anybody. Is I see we have a Joe here. Is that Joe Keys? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Do you um, did you want to make any comments on this, or do you want to wait until we collect all the signatures? And I, I, I would I would like to ask for a continuance. The uh, the trustees are sitting down this week to uh, okay. discuss the matter. And to be quite honest with you, the one trustee that I've been dealing with, I was under the assumption that all three trustees were on board, um, right. and that's my my oversight. I apologize for that. I was pretty much ready to go tonight until I heard from. Uh, uh, yeah. Debbie on the on, on I'm sorry Danielle on um, Friday about this so uh, I'd like to get that straightened out and um, if we can be put on for the next meeting I think we'll be we'll be ready to go okay good well that's why I opened it and we'll continue it because that way we don't have to go through that again we can uh, move right along I appreciate that thank you um, okay so um, you are you so we we have a do we have a formal request or we need one because we're still on time frame so I have an email, but it doesn't specify the date. Um, I do, I mean, I, I think we should make a motion to continue it to December uh, 21st. I know we have our subdivision hearing coming back. I believe that's at eight o'clock on the 21st. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you wanna make this one. Um, if we make it 8.15, it will likely be a little bit later. We could make it for 8.30. I'm sure the subdivision will take some time. Yeah, so yeah, Debbie, if you make this one 850, I don't I don't necessarily Debbie uh, wrote it for 830 in the motions. Um what for for next yeah in for the, the 21st and, yeah okay. but well here's the thing I'm not I'm not sure that um, um I'm not sure that this is a short discussion. No, I don't no, think so. I, I, I don't think it is either, Mr. Chairman. I think there's a number of issues that we need to kind of straighten out. This one's been a long time coming before yep. the board. And right. mainly I had advised uh, the one trustee that I was dealing with to get all of the physical issues uh, with the building complete before we came to, to your board uh, so that, you know, those issues would be all squared away and, and no one would be saying, hey, what about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to get all those issues addressed. There was a lot of engineering that had to be done and due to COVID, a lot of the engineering companies that he had previously dealt with uh, were, were unwilling or unable to come out to the property. So we've been really kind of hamstrung by the whole, the whole process over the last year and a half. So um, we'd like to just, you know, come Joe, in. Do you want to move this into the beginning of January to give you some time? Because you that's got the holidays fine. and things. That, that's fine as well. I mean, is is are there any specific items that the board has now that you want me to specifically address the next time around? Uh, you know, is, it, is there anything that you guys have on a list that you have issues with? That well, we have a list of issues. However, I very much like your concept of 
trying to take as many of those off the table as possible. It certainly makes the whole thing easier. Uh, and I, like I said, I think all the physical issues, I mean, you can check with the uh, with the um, building inspector, with the building inspector. I think as far as the physical issues, with the exception of, I think, one thing that arose last week or two, um, <laughs> the crash of the building. Accident. I'm sorry, <laughs> the crash into the building. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty, and what, what that was pretty nasty. essentially essentially what happened with that is one of the employees, you know, the, you know how the new cars are where you have you don't have a shifter anymore. You got a little dial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she thought the dial was in park and it was in drive and she hopped out of the car and the car just kept going. So uh, that was the problem. What what happened there? Um, you know, kind of an engineering issue with the, with the car, I guess. But um, I know that. Um, Someone had uh, mentioned that they want some bollards installed and things like that. And, and Mr. Boba has already gone and got the engineering going for that. So, okay. uh, you know, we want to we want to do everything that's required and, and, and get everything done. So, so, um, so I'm, like I'm I said, as far as if we can address all the physical issues and we can just at least start the meeting going, OK, those are all done. Here's the new new site plan. And essentially with the site plan, all we're doing is moving the dumpster. And I think there was one other issue that we needed to hammer out. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to lower the amount of parking for the office space too. Well, there are some other issues there too, Chris. So what I would like to do yeah. is not get into the issues right now. Yeah, right. Because uh, I think parking is going to be a whole discussion because that's right, that, right. you know that's a whole. So I think, thing I think that we if need you get a, out. yeah, I think if you get a copy of the memo of Danielle's memo, I I, I, I saw that. Yep. Okay, that will give you an idea of what some of the issues are, and as many of those as you can uh, take care of or come to some kind of a, a, a conclusion on, that would be fine, because it sure. doesn't necessarily mean that because you asked for it that you're going to, that, we, that we're going to allow some things that do violate our zoning, and, and again, Understood. I was involved in the initial uh, approval of this, and we there were some, and um, I remember a lot of why we did what we did and what those concerns are, so you might I do be, too. You would be probably well. Yeah, that was before my before my time when the building was built. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, I was going to yep. say you might be well served to review the the uh, the file on that. Uh, yeah, so I, that's another great point. I'll come down and grab the file if that's okay, Danielle, and I'll 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 read the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, I All think right. that's a good way to go about it because then you get an idea of where we were coming from and why we did what we did, and that will help a lot. Uh, sure. And it may change. It maybe it may change what you ask for. Uh, okay. and, and make the whole thing a whole lot easier. So, um, so I, I recommend that you do that, and that we uh, and that we moved you to maybe first meeting in January to give you time to do that, assimilate all that information, and make the changes you can make, and then so that the site plan that you ultimately bring to this next meeting will be uh, uh, probably a lot simpler and maybe a lot easier to get put together. Sure, sure. So, what what when would that date be for that meeting? January fourth. I'm just sending you an email, Danielle, right now, requesting a continuance for that date. Sure. That will that work, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, for the request. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. There it goes. Okay, we're all set. We know you're asking. Yes, you're I have asking. it. Thank you. Oh, okay. We got it, verb got it verbally at a public hearing, Warren. I know, I know. It's That's recorded three ways from Sunday. So. <laughs> I do uh, have well, the email. Tell that we can go ahead and vote on that and get him moved along there. So, um, um, so, so uh, we have, so uh, Brian, do you want to make a motion or do you want to just paraphrase it? Yeah. Yeah, do we want to do it for the fourth? Yes, we want to make a motion to continue this to the fourth. All right. Say Mr. eight o'clock. Oh, sorry. Should we say eight o'clock? Yeah, yes. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, eight o'clock. Mr. Chairman, I move the community planning commission vote to continue the public hearing for 92 Congress Street until Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. I got that right. You at did. eight o'clock PM. <laughs> I was waiting for that coming out right second. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion and a second. So before we vote on uh, any, uh, is everybody okay with that? Anybody have any further uh, questions or comments on it? We all good? Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Hayden? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. And myself is aye. So you are, uh, um, 
suspend until that till that time, Joe. So I hope that gives you enough time to. Uh, I, hope to so. I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll let you know, and if, if it's not, I'll I'll confer with Danielle, and we'll figure it out. But yep, if yeah, we can always move it along a little more because it's uh, just yeah. starting out now. So. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Have Thank a good you. night. Yep. Okay. I think you're down at the number four, Warren. Other business. Yeah, on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to get that to come back up. Here we go. <laughs> three, four. None, uh, nope, I only got, uh, what do you got that I don't have? I got one, two, three. Well, you got, well, no, it's, it's Roman numeral four. <laughs> Other business and old and old and new. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I was looking at the actual uh, stuff for the uh, for the meeting here. So uh, yeah, so, well, we did the ANR. We did ninety two. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're good. Yeah, you're not doing the next two things, and we did thirty five. Uh, oh. This thing is just slow. So yep. Okay. There we go. So do we have ZBAs? Uh, yes, we do, huh? We do. We don't have we, any ZBAs. Uh, well, we, we the, the ZBA has a meeting on Thursday. Oh, did they not send us those applications? And we, no. and, and, yes. And, and one of the things they're gonna, um, well, Danielle, do you wanna explain any of this with the thing with Jerry and all that, so? Sure. Um, we sent them up, we, I, okay, go ahead and tell them. Yeah, so 271 Main Street, which was the um, application for the electric uh, vehicle charging stations, which the CPC approved, um, and then, you know, realized that their intent was to do animated signs um, on the stations. Um, so the locations themselves were not really the issue. Uh, the issue really was that they were they wanted to put these TV screens on them that really are not allowed by our zoning bylaws. So, um, you know, Jerry was in agreement that they were not allowed by the bylaws. So um, they issued them or de denied the, the sign permit that they then applied for and um, that decision is now being appealed. So, Warren, knowing that they were coming in, it was advertised, but I don't know that they ever sent us the application for it. Anyway, really wanted to send in a comment. So I did send a comment kind of you know, summarizing what the concerns had been and, and saying that this was not recommended um, to, you know, that the cited the part of the zoning bylaw that specifically does not allow television screens, advertising, animation, flashing, rotating images, that kind of thing. Um, Warren, did you want to say anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, only to find out that they already had one on the front of the building, <laughs> and um, that uh, that Miss Debbie noticed and uh, mentioned to the <laughs> mentioned to the building inspector. And anyway, so we we you know they don't have permission for that one either. Now that one's probably not as big a concern, except for it does violate the bylaw. However, the other two are clearly put in a position where they got to run people over walking to and from the store. That's just all there is to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. get run down. So we just, we just, um, but there was a concern that the, um, that the, um, that the ZBA may not, have un may not understand completely everything that's been going on there. So we sent them a, uh, so I had Danielle send them a, a note reiterating our position on it and, and the whys and so forth. Um, so I didn't know if the board itself wanted to send anything else because basically what I'd said, I didn't want to speak. Uh, I just spoke as the chair of the board to, to, to say, just to remind them of these issues and remind them of the legal issues. And that's basically what we did. Uh, I think we should, we could send them a, a note to him saying to support the building inspector because he's the one that denied right. that, this, that signage, the moving signage is what those right. things are. They're, right. they're, they're more of a, they're more of a uh, advertisement than they are a charging system. Right. So I really like something that came from the board. And I think that one of the, and so one of the things I left out on purpose so that the board itself could push it forward perhaps is the fact that 
this is the whole idea behind the appeal is a hardship. There is no hardship here. No. Yeah, they're <laughs> the not going to make any money. Created if they do it. <laughs> yes, so, they're not going to make any money. I don't know that they need a hardship to appeal the building inspector's decision. I don't think this is a variance request yet. Yeah. I don't. At least it would have not, to be. I mean, well, they would come back with one. Yeah, but I don't think they've applied. Have they actually applied for a variance? I don't know if they have. I mean, they would be. So in the future, if they, they if in order to appeal the building inspector's mm -hmm. decision, they're going to have to ask. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to have to allow them to do something than what the state at law is. That's a variance. That's a variance. And, right. It will be. It isn't yet. But yeah. It will be. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. I don't think we want to even get that far. I mean, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And also. Um, you know, I, um, coming from the board could be also some comments uh, along the lines of they didn't they didn't tell us this is what they were doing. <laughs> they kind of didn't. Yeah. And, and one of the things I, we put in the one that we that that we sent over already was, as professional uh, owners of this of this uh, shopping center, they should have been aware of the law and the fact that they proposed something that was in violation of the law and then didn't even tell us about it. That's like a double whammy. I mean, there's no yeah. You don't you don't do that. Yeah. And they they hid they hid what what those screens real were. intent was, yeah. Real intent so is I, to advertise. So I, anyway, the building inspector asked me to to uh, make sure that we made our position and educated them as much as we possibly could prior to this meeting, so that we, they would uh, so they would understand why it's important that that we uh, that we don't allow those in this particular location. So anything that the board would like to add through Danielle. I would, uh, if you think there's something else that should be added in there. Well, you know, what I, what I had said, but any, anybody else could add something too. I guess I'm the big mouth tonight. <laughs> well, I just noted, um, just want to make sure I got everything, um, uh, supporting the building inspector's decision um, that there would be no hardship for future variants. Um, yeah. It was not included in the presentation. Chris, did I capture your? I I, I was writing and yeah, no, you 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 got what I. I mean, we can't say that you know it's 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 only they're only putting them there to make money. Um, they're really they're they're I mean they're they're trickle chargers. They're not real chargers. You'd have to have those things plugged in for twelve hours to charge your batteries or more. It's not even yeah. as good as a household charger from what I could see from the output that they're giving. So it's really more of, I thought it was a ruse um, for, for putting uh, advertising, moving advertising right. in that right. parking lot. So, right. um, you know, we, we, we looked at that and said, Oh, great. We got some charges coming in on private property. It'd be wonderful because it's a place where people drive their, drive their Teslas and they'll plug into it. No Tesla is going to plug into that because it's not worth it, you know. And I don't know what they're going to charge for for their for their electricity because there is a charge for the electricity. Well, I most mean, of these are places. You sure? do those, does those charging stations have a charge for electricity, or is it complimentary? I know that I know a Tesla does. Most well, most charging stations do have a charge for the electricity. Well, the thing is, if it's as low output as you say, for the cost of running a hundred watt light bulb, they can have you plugged in for an hour. And that's that's only a few cents, and certainly yeah. Can't be it, 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 they may be they may be picking that up for free. I don't know. They yeah. never said yeah. that either. There was an option when um, Jerry and I met with them before they decided to appeal this decision. Um, they had said that there was an option where they could charge, and they could charge money and and give cars a, a real charge while they were there, but that the owners of the plaza didn't want to go in that direction. Um, we like, thought that that gonna, would solve the problem. going to make them pay for it. Yeah, exactly. You could charge the customer. I mean, people do pay to have, yeah, I mean, I don't know the point. The, setup is, the, 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 the owners of the, of the, of the uh, shopping center would mm -hmm. have to be collecting the money from the people, charging the people. Well, the people are not going to plug in. They'd rather just go back home and plug in. You know, it's not like we live 60 miles from most places. And most of the people that shop at that store probably live within 10 miles of that store. So there's not really a... So there's not a need to do it. Is, 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 uh, is rather... Is advertising for the for, for three cents worth of electricity. 
Paid advertising. Paid advertising. Yeah, they ain't going to be free to be on those things. They're going to be paid. And that's what they're going to make their money. And the store is going to make money, too. Yeah. And they get to check the sustainability box for their portfolio. Yeah, that's right. They look good. <laughs> they look good, Ryan. That's what it's You're all correct. About. It's that's the other thing it's all about. That's what got us kind of tied into it really quick, right? Yeah. So um, <sighs> it may be that you know we just. So do you want to send? You want to send your comments, Chris, and anybody else's off to the. Uh, Oh, I think it should just come from. I think it should come from the board. That that works from the board. Well, that's what I want. Yeah. I want it to come from the board. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Absolutely. already did one for me, but now we're going to yeah. the board. Well, yeah. Warren, I think after we spoke, I, I don't think you were that specific about how to sign it, so I signed it from the CPC. Oh. Okay. But I'll send a second one, and it can be from the CPC again. That's fine. yeah. Tell us, but, but well, the second one could say as a result of discussion at our meeting. Sure. Yeah. This this was um you know. There was uh, there was input from which the rest we, of the board from the from the whole board that this is not a great idea and that which we didn't get notified of. Yeah, and that we um, you know, and that the whole board supports the building inspector's decision. So, so is there anything else on the zoning board that we don't know that's coming up? <laughs> no, um, no, I, I'm. I only know because Jerry jumped on me about it, and um, and I went down to see Danielle and said, "Hey, what, what's going on here?" Yeah, <laughs> he, we, 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 we don't seem to we don't seem to be getting. I think we need to. Not now, but maybe in the not too distant future, send a um, a request to the to the Board of Appeals that they give us a little more information so that we can do a better job of advising them. Yeah. Right. Because we're not getting enough information to advise them. Yeah, it's it's going backward again. Yeah. I don't think it's going yeah. backward but for the same reasons it went backward before. I think it's going no. backward now because of uh, um new too many new people on the on the board right. still learning the ropes and learning what it is that they need to look for and to do. Are they are they taking any of the classes that are available? I, I, I don't know sent but the I information. Think Right. Yeah. Yeah. Danielle sent the information more. Yeah, for oh. the CTPC schedule. But, um, you know, whenever we went to those meetings, there were more zoning board people at those meetings than there were right. planning board people at the meetings because they thought there was more important. Well, um, yeah, the, but a lot of zoning boards do what we, some, some, a lot of what we do, some zoning boards do instead. That's true. So, that's so, true. So we're covering, we're covering some things, you know, that's just the way it is. So. I'm taking right, those courses so right now. Danielle, then any other? Oh, yeah. you. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, Jeremiah. Any um, planning board, planning administrator updates? Uh, yes. 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 Today. Let's talk about uh, our update on Shailene. Shailene, yes. yes. <laughs> we had a meeting so today at, at, uh, for Shailene, and we've... Um, We've made a bunch of headway. They've, uh, uh, Dave Murray's gone back and fixed some of the things that were done that were creating some of the problems. And Luke Roy is now going to be the engineer of uh, record. So um, we're going to get some uh, support from him. Um, in, in When he does the as-built, he's going to do, normally when he does the as-built, he'd just do the roadway. But he's agreed to do some of the topo surrounding, especially down by lot nine, down that very end, to give us some so look at some existing grade or some of the, the, the as-built grades so that we can get some kind of an idea if our runoff calculations are still valid. Uh, they, had a small, they had a small study done of the, uh, of the uh, west, well, basically the southwest side of, uh, of lot nine uh, adjacent to the uh, detention pond, and they're going to provide that to Dave Jane Grandy to review those drainage calcs to make sure that, you know, they are actually, that they're valid. Um, so we're making some headway there and solving that problem. I, I, did I miss it? It's a couple of things there. Um, I think that's... Uh... Yeah, 
No, I think um, it's great news that we have an engineer of record for the project. Um, you know, it was good to sit down and, and talk about yeah. what's happened and what the next steps are. Um, I think a lot of the actual work they feel has been done as far as the mediate, like remediating the, the you know, addressing the, the problems. I think we agreed that, you know, other than having Dave Giangrande assess the new calculations that were done, not by Luke, but by another engineer that Mr. Mari hired, um, we are gonna have Dave look at that. Um, but other than that, I think the next real assessment that would be done would, would be when it's time for the as-built plan to be mm -hmm. to be looked at. And well, in, unless there are- really hard. Unless we have an issue, which I think looking at it on the ground, um, you know, they they made the grades conform to what the original subdivision plan was. So there's no new yeah. approval needed. Um, it's it's just that they were going back to the way the, oh. the water was supposed to behave before. So we're hopeful that that will help. Right. We're well, hopeful that'll work. Do, and then they're gonna, do we know how far? Little, He's going to put a, a little semi-type detention pond further up on the, uh, on the, um, basically on the east side. He's going to put uh, of that of the lot. Uh, he's going to put a little uh, depression that will catch any water from there and slow it down, and um, and then infiltrate a certain amount of it because it is sandy soils over there. So, um, and and, they, and again, filling everything in back to it so that the grades that are on the ground now conform more closely to the ones on the original uh, subdivision approval is going to help a lot but also so, so, uh, also getting um having the the landscaping done and having some greenery and some grass and stuff growing to absorb some of this is going to help so warren how do you know how far off the uh the grades were at the time of bad runoff to the what oh, they yeah. were supposed to be oh yeah it was there was, was big it, stone swales it's, it's almost like they captured all the water in the area and brought it down to that one little point down there. And there oh, was like is that a right? Hole down there. there was a big hole they dug in the ground before, like a plunge pool. It's all sand over there, all sand. Yeah. So all the water would run into that plunge pool and just disappear down to the sand. But you couldn't leave that there because, you know, it's like it's a hazard. So they, yeah. once, so they fit, it got all got filled in and graded and everything, but, but they left those swales there. So now the water came down those swales and ran over the top of it into the odds. On another road, so okay. That's all. That's all been fixed, basically back to where it was supposed. So, to be so it was. Back. It wasn't slight. It was a lot. It was. It was a large change you had to yeah, make to yeah, bring that should, grade back. You okay. Look at some of the uh, pictures. Some of the videos sent to us is. Oh, I saw the water. I saw the water. Yeah, the water yeah that was crazy. Yeah, like a stream. Yeah, that looked like the water coming off the hill behind my house. Yeah, well, there's also water coming out at that on on the. Um, I don't know what what lot is it that's across the street there, Danielle. Is it six? No, I think six is the one right next to it. It's the next one, but it's right across the street, across the. Yeah. Coast. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, the other side of the I went over there and looked, and water's breaking out of the hill. I'm like, look, water's breaking right out of the hill on this thing. So he's got to put a little curtain drain in there and direct it over to the catch basin, because that that that's that's. Uh, uh, that detention pond is huge. It's more than big enough to handle pretty much everything that can be brought to it. Uh, and so we, we're going to try to capture some of that water too. And instead of letting it come out of the ground and run across with a curtain drain and drop it into the catch basin and feed it to the, to the uh, detention pond and, and let the detention pond you know, either get rid of it or, or send it where it would normally be going, which is across, the, across that, the lot line and into that wooded area. Yeah where it was supposed to go in in the beginning well yeah i used to sheet flow down there that's yeah. so so yeah so instead of the, the way it was the designed flow, to follow like it had been what so, was what i said it, it they designed it to to flow the way it had been well, over the history came there wasn't it, it doesn't appear that there's a problem with the original design it no it's the with the change problem came when the guy from lot nine changed the whole his grading and put a house one and a half times the size and yeah. oh, oh way, is that he's right? Requiring he and he's holding money back on that house to um, to put proper gutters on it into the into the infiltration units that are in the ground right now. Just try to slow that down too. So because there was supposed to be some amount of, of a guttering, which when we were over there looked, it was only about twenty percent gutter, and it's got to be about fifty percent when they're done. So again, everything every drop helps here. So yeah. Um, 
So uh, yep. theoretically, th theoretically, um, the next time we get a big rain, the way things are right now, it should be pretty well mitigated. That could be Saturday. We'll see. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that, Danielle? No, I think that this is, I think hopefully we're in good shape for right now. Um, yeah. I feel better having an engineer overseeing this. Yep. And because we didn't for a while. So, yep. um, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not we had an engineer, but the developer needed an engineer. Right, so. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what so I meant. Responsible. He's yeah. a somewhat hesitant engineer. <laughs> I can understand. Well, I mean, you know, he's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this whole, you know, drainage scale to do this whole catchment area, you know, and uh, so I, I agree that he could probably, in doing the as built, if he showed the actual, if he, if he did the, the grades surrounding the uh, cul-de-sac down the end there and, and in that particular catchment area and gave us at least a grading plan that we could compare to the original subdivision plan, we'd be able to get a pretty good idea as to whether or not that catchment was working the way it was supposed to. Yeah. That's where we left it. So All right. that's where we're at. That was a fun meeting. <laughs> well, it was good. We made progress and yes, I think everyone felt better yeah. about where we were going with it. Yeah, so. yeah. We're, I mean, well, I think we're, I think, you know, you know, um, they know how to do all this stuff. Sometimes you can just force them into it. And that's basically, I feel like we, I feel like we basically had to lead, take them by the hand, lead them down and tell them if we don't, we're going to spank them, you know, that, you know, whatever. But they um, ultimately, though, they were cooperative and, and, and agreed to it and even did, pre did some of the fixing, knowing that that's what was, should have been done in the first place. So yeah. we're already a good way towards our, our repair of the situation that, that was not done right, you know. That's good. All the changes were made. In, in some defense of the situation, I suppose, some of the changes were made in, when the whole pro thing was in process in an attempt to try to capture some of the water that was running off and to, and to, and to direct it and to try to get it to go. But, but, but they were not, they, you know, but they weren't engineered. So they were just like done and, and, yeah. and they work. And so, well, they made the problem worse in some cases. So, uh, so that's all been taken out and it's all been put back to pretty much the way it shows on the subdivision plan. So we're hopeful that that will do the job. Good. So that's where we're at. Okay. Anything as always, anything else? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know the um so the Capital Improvement Committee is uh Capital Improvement Planning Committee is meeting tomorrow afternoon and they're gonna be talking about the Central Street project and repaving money for Route 28. And um, this time, instead of me submitting the request, actually I had been working with the town engineer and DPW offered to submit it as part of their um, list of different projects. And so um, I worked with the town engineer on that and um, he's gonna be presenting and I'll be attending. And if anyone wants to go, then great. If not, that's fine. Um, I'll be going with John and he'll be doing the presentation for all of his street and sidewalk and other improvement um, requests. Um, and he'll have Did a presentation. Route 28? Yes, route and the other one is Route 28, which, um, so he and I have been working with TEC on that plan, um, the, oh, okay, the concept okay. plan. That's still kind of ongoing. Route 28, I'm going, what about paving Route 28? Um, so the redesign, actual construct reconstruction funds he wants to request. I don't really think that the town is going to give funds to actually reconstruct Route 28, but he wants to have it in the portfolio of Okay, projects. yeah, so in other words, try to duplicate what happened in Reading, the type of thing. Yeah, yeah and I'm sorry, not the not the construction funds itself, but the, the design funds. For design so to funds. Get a full design okay, yeah. So that we could get it on the tip to compete, right? Not that we would right. be paying for construction, right. but the design. Because yeah, we can't do it would still work. be on the hook for the design. So right. um, so as far as that study goes, I was in touch recently with Liz, the consultant on that project. Um, she has results from the survey. She's gonna be calling me probably early January just to kind of go over what the findings were before putting everything into a report um, with recommendations. Um, so that study is ongoing. And then by the time, you know, summer rolls around and, you know, capital funds are given you know it's possible that we could have some redesign money for okay so uh, so i'm gonna just throw this out there and maybe you can bring it with you um we got to do concord street is a mess yeah 
I know. So that's on John's radar too. And I actually have to ask him what the plan is for when can that we, one's can, can, Is the rest of the board with me? Can we, can we just- Oh yeah, it's a mess. In? Can we yeah, put a, a request mess. in <laughs> to, uh, oh, to, let me ask to him take him. a closer look at Concord Street and see if they can't move that up the ladder a little? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, That's where all our money comes well, from right you. now. You want to keep those people kind of happy. And everybody in town, just about. I'm not, I the, mean, it's not just them. I mean, that, I mean, I thought I thought that when we had Cat do the work up there, that they were going to repave a whole section of that road and make it nice. And all they did is patch it. Yeah. yeah. Why do I feel like we didn't, why do I feel like they didn't do what they were supposed to do there? They might not have. And and nobody nobody stayed I mean, on I, top of them. I, I know you got. I know you have a pro, like another project you got to work on down there. You don't really have time to do this right now, but at some point in the not too distant future, we should take a just a quick look back at that approval, and see what the paving requirements were because it, it seems to me that even driving by there, it's all just a big patch that they never really. My understanding was they were supposed to pave just, just so far up and just so far past their property to, to make sure that there wasn't a mess there. And it isn't that I will look at that. Want to pave that right now, but what I would like to do is maybe take a small contribution to the town to help support paving of Concord Street <laughs> in total. Okay, let me find out. Um, okay. I, that, that's been that way a long time. I mean, that, that project predates me, so it's been, yeah. it's yeah. been nine years at least. But every time but I, it, it might be ten. It might be ten. Every time I drove by there, I kept thinking, okay, they got the patch done. When they finish building and everything, they'll pave this. And then it just like never happened, I felt. It never happened. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, I'll uh, find yeah, out. I, I didn't to, know that was part of their approval, but I'll find I'd have out. to take a look at that plan. But I want to say my memory serves me. There's a, it shows pave, you know, repaving that roadway from one point to another point to uh um you know to to clean up that area right there where they had to do all their hookups and stuff yeah i want to see maybe the town said that they were coming to do it and that's all they did was repair it yeah and they might have got money from them for that and then they never expended the money on that i don't know if that's true i don't recall or, that can... being the case chris I, I don't know that it isn't but i, I don't recall it being the case um, yeah i'm trying to think of who the, the who the uh well, Mike Sorgan was the town engineer, but who was the head of the DBW at that time? It wasn't Hanlon, was it? Was it still Hanlon when we did that? Maybe so, yeah. Because the Hanlon would have come, you know, they would have had asked to do that, right? Well, Hanlon was big on paving. He wanted to pave everything. Right, but he wanted to do it himself. Yeah. But he wanted to, he, which I can't, I don't blame him because he knew that the more repaved roads we have, the more money we get from the state so yeah that was the dirt roads that's correct but yeah, even well, every road it, that was good he yeah needed, he wanted money for him so right, so, yeah, right if we get if you get a chance to make a note just to look into that to see Definitely. and then drive out we'll take the plan drive out there and take a look and say i don't think they really did what they were supposed to i don't okay but either okay. way um put concord street up there there's a lot of traffic that travels back and forth on there and that road is a mess yeah, I will ask John where that is, um, and I'll let him know that you are all concerned about it. Yeah, needing to get paid soon. Okay, I'll talk. And to of course, the one it, it's um it would it will you know serve us well if we have a project going there to fix that roadway when when we look at anything other than anything else that's happening on that street. You know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a good it'll be a feather in our cap, so we should do that. We've tried mm -hmm. to move that forward. Just planning ahead, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, last thing, the uh, DPW director, uh, uh, Joe Parisi, has put out the RFP for the new um, study, which yep. has, is really quite different now from what FXM did. So I won't even really call it the update. It's um, he, He's put out um, this uh, RFP with requests for the proposals to be in December 22nd, and then um, there's a group of us scheduled to evaluate them at the beginning of January. So I will keep you posted on that. Okay. And this is this is going to be the best firm, not the cheapest firm, right? Exactly. Right. Good. Good. I the, the cheapest firm thing doesn't, you know. Well, we got. Yeah. It seems to me we got enough money for the best firm. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did. 
But, you know, yeah. look at Route 62 down here, Elm Street. That was the mm -hmm. cheapest firm that did that job for the state. And mm -hmm. boy, was it tough. Well, construction, yeah, I mean, that's different. But for an RFP, for a study like this, that's... Yeah. I mean, and that's not, I mean, it's probably going to well, be... You know, there's a lot of, again, this new these new bills they're trying to get through Congress. There's a lot of infrastructure money there. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna try to make sure somebody keeps an ear and eye on this, it. This, so there's another it there's another few billion dollars coming to the state of Massachusetts after the four. Yeah, we'd like to see if we can get as much of that as we possibly can. We gotta to talk to we gotta talk to we gotta talk to uh, Senator Tarr and yep, yep. Congressman uh <laughs> what? Representative Brad Jones. Representative Brad Jones, thank you. Yes. I was like, yeah. I don't know why I was having a senior moment there. That's okay. Well, um, I'll talk to, I'll, well, I'll talk, well, you know, I'm, I was kind of, as soon as I was kind of waiting for the, for to see if the whole thing got canned or if it actually went somewhere, but if it went somewhere, then I was going to be on Bruce's doorstep, so. Yeah. Well, the, the first one went somewhere, yeah. Yeah, but they just, they just allocated money from the first monies that they got last year and they got more money coming to them, so it might be time to talk to Bruce. Yeah. To see if he's got his eye on that. Yeah. If not, we'll, we'll get him to put his eye on it. Yeah, a little bit, a little. It would be nice, you know. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't gotten a lot of cash out of that, you know. No, we've got we more of recently. Infrastructure needs, you know, that we, uh, you know. Which is, which will help, which will help everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see some grants come through. I'd like to get a good grant to do that Central Street sidewalk. That would be a good, really good deal. Yep. So, yeah. Because that's that's kind of a I can't tell you how many people walk back and forth down there. I, I drive go by them all the time, go ahead for the headed for the park and then coming back from the park. So yeah. it's um, not a safe area. As far as sidewalk use goes, I'd be willing to bet you put a sidewalk in there. It's gonna be it's gonna get when that sidewalk went in here on Havel Street, uh, I'm telling you, being able to watch that sidewalk all the time, see it, see how, how many people are on that every single day. Yeah, they're walking it's on impressive. the sidewalk, not in the street anymore. Yeah, it's impressive. Well, people wouldn't walk. Now they will. Yeah. And, and the I kids the kids are walking on the sidewalk on Central Street going to you know, school. There's people going back and forth there all day long. Yeah. So it really it really made a uh it really made a huge difference in the in the walkability of to get downtown because it's really not that far to the library or to no, it's uh, not to the or any riots or any of those things or the schools. And they'll walk yeah. now. Yeah, get get the kids from walking in the backyards. Yeah, go ahead, Jeremiah. Down Central. Is it is it true that there was originally a plan to put sidewalk down Marblehead Street that got uh, curtailed recently? Well, um, not real. Well, actually, no. Um, there was what happened was that we had some we got some money for um, for Marblehead Street from the developers down there, and then we got and then we put a little money into it, and we did a sidewalk as far as we could right down to the subdivision but we didn't just do in front of the subdivision we did all the way up to Haverhill Street and the DPW did a lot of the work so using money funds that they got that, that we got and funds that they got so um, so they, they collected from Deerfield and from the new subdivision down there they collected all those people but it doesn't go much further than that okay. that's all no, but the houses I begin it. to get really spread out when you get that far too Nah, no, nah, I mean that's that's not where he and, is. Uh, yeah, and it's not. I mean, it's it's until you get to the uh, Middleton line. I mean, it's dense houses all the way. And uh, yeah. I mean, it was I nothing you, where you are, Jeremiah. Yeah, until until your the, house front, is the front of my house. <laughs> the front of my house is a freaking racetrack. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, oh, it, yeah. it's ridiculous the speeds that people drive, and you know we're talking heavy, heavy trucks. Mm -hmm. the dump trucks the you know yep. i mean it's uh i i legitimately fear for my daughter yeah, yeah. no 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 house. it's there's no question they, they're fast down there um and yeah. most of those people don't live in north Reading. no it's exactly. bypass and, road. and you got you got neighbors we have neighbors who have signs out in their front yard of th this is a community not a racetrack and yeah and there, there's no and I, the thing that i don't i mean this is you know, question for another day, and it's not necessarily maybe a, a topic for us, but, you know, there's, there's, I mean, we've got the, there's the crossing of the trail 
and Harold Parker from one side to the other side. Yep. There's no signage on the road. There's no crosswalk signs. There's no right. radar, you know, your speed zone. And you look at how fast people drive on Haverhill compared to Marblehead, it's night and day. And part of it, I think, is that it's a wider street. You know, um, you don't have poles as close to the road. Um, it's it's a dan- it's a it's legitimately dangerous condition. Um, that you know, I'm curious, like you know, uh, you know, how else in my other capacities I can go about trying to advocate for changes on that because I understand that's not necessarily part of our mandate, but. Um, well, basically, the I, way this works, Jeremiah, is is that they do they do like a a, a matrix, you know, and they would you know to, of all the streets. We, now we had a um, now Dan uh, who who was on Dan Mills who was on the board before was on a sidewalk committee, and I think they did a matrix of needs as far as mm-hmm. what's the what's the neediest a sidewalk down to the less needy sidewalks. And if you wanted to get a hold of that, you could find out where Marblehead Street showed up in that whole matrix. Mm-hmm. Debbie probably has a copy of that. What's been done? Send that to you. Thought. Yeah, I can send that to you. And also, the mm-hmm. thing that yeah. came after that was we did the complete streets prioritization plan, right. which took yep. a bunch yep. of, and we prioritized it. Um, and I can't remember if Marblehead Street is on there or not, but um, that was supposed to be the list of projects that would that we would be eligible for for grant funds for for complete streets. Of course, you know, now complete streets is telling us we're only eligible every four years. So which, anyway, there's a there's an idea to find out where you are on it, and then perhaps to advocate to get your street moved up if you want. I mean, there's that that's what that's the information you're looking for. There it is. Okay. You know, the other yeah, thing is, is is get uh, see if we can get a officer down there and do some uh, radar checking. And yeah. It, well, you I know, mean, it helps for a while, Warren. You know, and, and uh, if yeah. they don't know, they're not down there all the time. No, I've complains. never once. I've never well, when you get into same. Middleton, there's one of those little flashing signs that comes on and says you're going slow down. You go, there's two of them actually when you yeah. get into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, who's, who's, who's in charge of those flashing signs? Is that uh, police department? The police is, yeah. I think the DBW puts them up. We for bought them, one for the police department at one point yeah. out of uh, some funds that we many years ago from funds from the subdivision. We bought the oh, can uh, I, police one. Can I pay for one? I mean, <laughs> I yeah, mean, I literally. Think, I mean, don't think that much money anymore. Yeah, like three thousand I mean, dollars a piece, ish. Yeah, two hundred twenty-five hundred dollars a piece. I think that's yeah. what. But the DBW and, and the police, you know, they if you want to if you fund it, they might they might be okay with it. Well, the police department you know, or if you get your neighbors too. to help out, yeah. Yeah, you get if you're in neighborhood push. If you ask them if it's okay, then get a neighborhood push, and everybody puts in fifty bucks, and before you know it, you got a, a sign down there. Yeah, I've also noticed that in in parts of Middleton and parts of Linfield, you know, they've got the uh, weight capacity uh, on on certain streets, and that's another thing that uh, I've never understood why we don't have something like that for uh, bypass streets that I would I would consider Marblehead. I mean, it's it's a shortcut kind of street. And, yeah, they should be going down sixty two. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't seem appropriate for dump trucks and the number of dump trucks that I count. I where my <laughs> office is, and you know, the, in the front of the house, I just watch that street, and it's. Uh, I've, I'm I'm honestly like installing a camera in the front um, just to kind of kind of capture the the behavior on the road in front of us. I mean, yeah. I, no no exa- no exaggeration. I mean, it could okay. lead us to moving. You know, Jeremiah, yeah, just so you'll understand, Marblehead is considered one of the main streets in North Reading. And the way you know that is that when the town plows it, they plow the main. And the yeah. main, I mean, I'm serious. This is this. So it had, that, that's the consideration. That's considered a main route from and first, town line to Haverhill Street and then Haverhill Street from town line to town line and 62 from town line to town line. Those are the mains that the town plows. And the reason they and they and the reason they plow those because of the main access routes. Uh, there's not a there's not a commercial route that replaces those, and so that's what you'll run into. So you probably won't get that change. Maybe not. Well, but just you'll know. Now you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way they're considered. That's how they're called out. Yeah, we need to save up our money so that we can move uh, into a neighborhood. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Well. 
Yeah, when I bought my house, it was dead end street. Yeah, it's not it anymore, is it? Yeah, we used to have block parties down where Dwayne comes on to Foley. We used to have block parties down there. Did and, you um, develop so that war? We Dwayne off and closed Foley off, and there was nobody coming in and out because everybody lived there. So yeah. Uh, died, but then it's been a millennium since we've been able to do that. So as they uh, opened it all up and all the new streets are in, and now there's now it's a cut through. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we uh, we all set. Anybody have anything else they need to bring up? Are you all set, Danielle? I'm all set. All okay. done. Okay. Good. Twenty first. Yep. Yeah. Twenty first. All right. Great. So I thank you all for coming tonight. We did. I think we made some headway tonight. We'll see what we we'll see how we do. <laughs> no holiday okay. parties on the twenty first. Keep an, eye, here. keep an eye on it and if you uh i don't know if i can i have a thursday i'm i have a, mm -hmm. an afternoon appointment i'm not sure if i'll get out of time um but if either anybody else wants to go to the board of appeals and and uh defend our um, um that's a zoom meeting is it is it a live meeting or a zoom meeting zoom can you send us the details, Daniel? Is that possible? Yes, you know what? I think it's actually been posted already. Um, I'll just give myself a note. I will send you all the link. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, I might get to Zoom it too. So I wouldn't mind getting Yeah, they won't, yeah, they're not in meeting there. in person, I don't think. Yeah. Well, we were the first board to go back to Zoom because I knew that this was not going to be good and then everybody yeah. followed. <laughs> I don't think the ZBA ever started meeting in person again. I, I think, don't think they, they did. continuously Zoom. ConCom too, because it's so much easier for them. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, um, if, we, if we can, some of us can, you know, let's see what we can do to make sure that this stop and shop thing doesn't get out of hand. Yeah. yeah. So. All righty. Right. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night.